like to welcome you to BeMoreNews.com, the news before the news, where we uncover the truth. The one and only Hassan Giordano. How are you, sir? I'm just right, and you? All right, let's get a political rundown. How's this? Uh, let's start at the top, the governor's race. How's it looking? Oh, well, right now it's still early, Donnie. I know we've seen time and time again uh, Mr. Ganser, our attorney general, put his foot in his mouth. Uh, and we know that this is coming from the opposition, but uh, yet and still, I think a lot of that stuff would have been solved if he had never responded at all. Uh, but again, we st it's still early. Dutch Burger is talking about still is, is set to possibly make an announcement one way or the other by Thanksgiving. So we'll see if we'll have another candidate in the race. But at this point, it's clear that it's between Brown and Ganser. I know Heather Mazur is still in the race, but at this point, I, I, I see it one of those two. Taking it now on the Republican side of the things, I think uh, you know you have th three candidates as well, and Charles Lawler has come under heat uh, recently for not having a very organized campaign. Maybe they need to come holler G Com Media Company uh, to make that happen. But That's your company. Dave, yeah, David Craig's uh, campaign looks pretty smooth, but again, we're still in a Democratic stronghold of Maryland, so it's unlikely that either of the three candidates on the Republican side of the ticket can mount enough. Uh, 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 energy in order to, to knock off a Democrat in November, but we'll see. Okay, Anthony Brown, you haven't uh, alluded to him yet. Well, Anthony Brown, you know, is running a, a pretty low-key um, race. Uh, he hasn't really come out with too many. Uh, uh, recently, he came out with one issue uh, in regards to domestic violence. I think it's going to be a key issue in the, in the you know, upcoming legislative session. But in terms of issues that are related to the people, I think uh, we saw the Gansler campaign coming out with issue after issue from criminal justice to pre-K that other candidates have followed. Uh, so Brown may be just biding his time raising money before the January 15th filing deadline, uh, the first financial deadline, and then may come out throughout the session with some more uh, uh, key issues that are, are, are geared towards the constituents. Were you surprised to hear Gansler talk about ex-offenders given that you have a black man that he's running against and given that black men make up 44 percent of America's prisons. I wasn't surprised, especially with Gans Mr. Gansler's background. As the attorney general, as a former prosecutor, I was a little surprised at that. You would think he would be more the law and order, lock him up, throw away the key kind of candidate. Um, but him and, and Heather Mazur really led that effort in the beginning in terms of talking about these issues. And Gansler had a 10-point plan that was near and dear to my heart as the chair of the criminal justice for the NAACP. And for Brown not to even address that was, was kind of shocking. As you said, the African-American candidate who's supposed to represent the, the African-American constituency that he definitely wants the, them to vote for, for him, uh, to not even speak on that or even come out with a platform or agenda or, or a white paper of his own on that issue was, was paramount. And I, so I think that's going to that's gonna, uh, speak volumes when it comes to Prince George's County uh, and Baltimore City on June 24th. Because these are majority black jurisdictions? Absolutely. Okay, so and Charles County. Charles County is slowly also becoming very much African American. Okay, well that brings to mind this question: Does a black statewide candidate have the opportunity to speak about black issues? Well, they do, and I and I hope they would. I mean, first of all, it's the first time in Maryland history that the gubernatorial race uh, part of the focus was on criminal justice. That used to be the third rail of politics unless they were railing against criminals. So, you know, I applaud um, Doug Gansler and Heather Mazur for even addressing those issues. Now, I, I haven't heard Heather Mazur. She's spoken about mass incarceration. This she is has. news she when to she, me. It was a couple months ago. She was running around the city and the state talking about those very issues. Showed up to a lot of NAACP events addressing those issues, including our monthly meeting. But obviously, Doug Gansler came out with an entire 10 point plan had an actual uh, a white paper and agenda item uh, geared specifically towards criminal justice. So it's going to be interesting to see. With that. So, so does that suggest that, again, let me just ask you, that a black statewide candidate cannot talk about black issues? Oh, absolutely not. I think you're going to see Aisha Brave Boy talk just that about black issues when she runs for attorney general. She's set to announce this Wednesday at uh, 6 o'clock. And, and this is the problem I have, Donnie, and I just wrote about this in DMV Daily was, you have a lot of black elected officials who have come to me and said, you know, I've endorsed Brown as a lieutenant governor. And my rationale is I don't want to be on the wrong side of history. 
as he would be the first black ever elected statewide. Well, so would Aisha Brave Boy if she was elected to attorney general, and yet they don't use that same rationale with her. Many of them have already signed on to Brian Frost's campaign. And this is a white guy. Year. And this is white Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. So you can't use that rationale for Brown and on the opposite side of that, not use that same rationale for Aisha Brave Boy. So what's the rationale? Why, why is it like that? Is it that... It's the Martin O'Malley machine behind Anthony Brown. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, let's be honest. They sold out their vote already to the Democratic O'Malley machine and have used that rationale that don't want to be on the wrong side of history. But let's be honest. Even if he wasn't black, they would have still signed on if O'Malley told him to. Now, Aisha Brave Boy is not a part of that machine. What? And so now all of a sudden it's, a, oh, well, she can't win. Well, how do you know she can't win? If you got your support and, and, and I had the testicular fortitude to stand behind a black woman who actually stood up for HBCU. She was the leading uh, uh, legislator standing up and actually did it with her vote. When many of them said, I'm not going to vote for the gas tax if we don't get the funding for HBCUs. Aisha Brave Boy was one of, one of only five African Americans who actually did that. The rest of them sold out like they usually do with the gas tax, with the rain tax, and all the other taxes and fees that we've been given by this administration. So I think that at the end of the day, the people need to know that because a lot of these legislators are going to community meetings. They had the Black Caucus event yesterday. Many of them were up there at the round table lying about how much now they support HBCUs and how much they're going to do that. But they didn't do that this past session, Donnie. So, and this was before what do you the mean? court ruling. Well, this past session, when the Black Caucus was, that was supposed to be their number one issue, HBCU funding. And when Delegate Brave Boy tried to lead the charge, many of them uh, used their Democratic positions to say, oh, we can't do that because the Democrats have asked us to do X, Y, and Z. A lot of them said that they would hold off their vote on the gas tax and the rain tax for specifically until they got the funding that was deserved for the HBCUs. They sold out. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. Now they're running they around the state. They did not get the funding? No, they didn't. And then they run around the state saying, oh, well, we did that, uh, but we got the school funding instead. That's that's a lie. And a lot of them will tell you that's I've looked at the school funding, and it's not what a lot of people might think it is. There are some black schools that are slated to get a nice piece of money, but that money is scattered out. And just how effective the benefit of getting that money will be remains to be seen. Mm -hmm. And you talk about the school construction of Baltimore City? Absolutely. And a lot of that is not African-American schools or an African-American dominated uh, communities, number one. Number two, we're still going to pay that money back. It's not free money. So please stop telling it like it is. They're even selling the gas taxes if this is this transportation funding that w Maryland so desperately needs. Well, if we wouldn't have spent the transportation trust fund on all the other issues that the Democrats wanted to play with, we would have the adequate money in the transportation budget in order to be able to fund the, the, the bridges and the roads being fixed. We didn't do that because Democratic governors both current and former, played with that money as they could, put it in the general fund and used it for other purposes. And so now they're telling you, we got to raise the gas tax in order to fund something that they already... Uh, so it's, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, essentially. And they're trying to sell this as if Marylanders need it, and we really didn't. Uh, uh, hold, hold tight. We're going to come back for more. Talking to Assange Giordano, DMVDaily.com. Keep watching. Be more news, the news before the news.